Hey everybody and welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. What if I told you that there are secrets hiding in plain sight? That messages, password files, video, scripts, and even malware disguised as innocent images are slipping past antivirus, data loss protection, intrusion protection systems, and other security controls every day. Your first question would probably be, how? And the answer is going to be something you have probably read about or at least seen the term, uh, or heck, maybe you've even had it as the subject of a question on a cybersecurity exam, because that is common. And it is none other than steganography. Steganography is not just a complicated word to say, it is actually also the art of concealing data within other files, such as embedding an invisible message or a zip file inside what appears to be, well, it is an image. Now, unlike encryption, which scrambles data, steganography hides it so well, no one, unless they know what they're doing, even knows it's there. Now, in ethical hacking, steganography is often used during penetration testing to simulate how attackers might exfiltrate sensitive information uh, or how to bypass security controls or to slip past firewalls to install malware or command and control tools. It can even be used in phishing campaigns to deliver hidden payloads or even just to secure information you want to be easily accessible, but not necessarily e easily noticeable. Now, in this video, I'll show you exactly how this works. You'll learn not only how to create these images that conceal hidden secrets, but also how to uncover them. So let's get started. All right, now before we can do anything, we need to open up a terminal and we need to verify that we have Steghide, which is going to be the tool we are going to be using to perform our steganography. Uh, and to verify if we have that, we can simply type in which steghide. And as you can see, we get no results. And if you haven't used the which command, you are expecting results if the actual application is there. So you can see nano, you can always do like which, I don't know, VI, you know, or even VI. So um, since we got no results, we know we need to install it. Now I'm on Kali Linux, so these install commands works for Kali Linux or any Debian-based distribution. Um, if you're using something else, you'll need to Google how to download and install Steghide, but it's probably something really similar. Um, but for us on Kali Linux, we're going to do a sudo apt get, and it's, we are root, so we don't technically need to sudo anything, but um, just go ahead and do it just in case you're not root, and that way you can follow along and it will work. And we're just going to do Steghide. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. It may or may not prompt you. I've already installed this because I wanted to make sure it worked before I wasted your time. Um, so it didn't prompt me, but usually it will ask you if you want to install it. Just go ahead and hit yes on that. So we are good. We have it installed. Now if I go here and I do which steghide, boom, you can see it's there. So now that we have the tool we need, let's go ahead and get rolling. All right, for the video, I went ahead and created a stego folder inside my lab, uh, and I put some files in there that we can use to uh, embed and conceal and all that great stuff. So let's see what we got. So we're going to do a directory listing here. And in the stego root directory, if it will let me scroll up, you can see we have some images, we have a script, and we have a text file along with some directories. Now the uh, extract directory is where we're gonna go ahead and extract these once we embed them. And then the um, backup directory is a backup of these five things, just so we can compare file size once we embed them. Um, because I think it's quite interesting to look at what they look like once they've been embedded. Now to verify, we have uh, images in here. Here you go. Here's our little Linux penguin. We got our Kali, yada, yada, yada. So we have working files, at least as of now. Whether they work after we embed them, we'll find out. So let's get started. What we want to do is start off clean here. And we're going to start with the command steghide. Go figure, the program we just installed. And then we're going to go with an embed because we want to embed and we're going to do a dash CF. Now CF stands for cover file. This is going to be the image or technically this actually supports a WAV file. So this could be a WAV file instead of an image. For this demo, we're using images. So we're going to do IMG1 first, JPEG. We're going to do dash EF. Now this is the, um, the flag that tells it which uh, file we want to embed. And I thought we'd start off with embedding and then admin, which is our text file. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. You have to enter a passphrase, which is cool to protect your information. And we are done. Doesn't look any different yet, right? 
So let's go ahead and do the second one before we take a look and see if the images still work here. So we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and cheat here. We're going to do that as number two. And we are going to change this to my script and hit enter. Again, a passphrase. And we are good there. Now let's go out. Actually, let's take a look real quick at, well, let's clean this up. And then let's look at the file size here and see if it's changed. So again, these are the embedded images. These are the original. So down here, we're at, or up here, I should say, we're at 76 for IMG1. Down here, we're at 72, 68 for IMG2, and actually 84. So they both went down in size, which is really interesting, isn't it? Um, that said, let's go ahead and check that we can still open them because that's kind of the point. So far, they look presentable. We're uh, refreshing them. We can see them as a thumbnail. Click them up. They open. No one would even know, right? Uh, and just to verify, that's where I am. I'm in the lab, Stego. Uh, so we have successfully done that. Um, now let's go ahead and copy these two and we'll go ahead and extract them inside the instruction folder to make sure it actually really did what it was supposed to do. All right, so we're gonna copy, actually here, let's clean this up and then just do an LS. So we're gonna copy IMG1, IMG2, into extract. And we're gonna go into extract. Oop, I'm not gonna do that. And as you can see, we just have two the two files we wanted in here. All right, cool. Now we can extract these. I'm gonna clear that up. And to extract them is actually really easy. We're just gonna type in steg hide, go figure, right? And we're going to do extract. And I think I got one too many spaces there. I don't know if that would matter or not. But anyway, we're gonna go extract and we're gonna do SF, which I believe stands for stego file. As cheesy as that sounds, I believe that's what we're saying. We're looking for the stego file, all right? We're gonna do a IMG1 and we go ahead and hit enter. And it's gonna ask us for that passphrase we uh, set up earlier. Go ahead and wrote it and you can see it extracted. Cool, let's do it for the second one and then we'll actually see if we can um, see what those secret messages are. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the same thing here and let's be lazy and just change this to two or efficient, I guess you could say. Go ahead and do that. And let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so we got my script, we got an, an admin. And if we remember, we got same size, 132 and 40, 132 and 40. Obviously we're gonna need to set this as executable, but let's go back in there to do that. All right, here we are again, clean it up because I have something I have to clean every screen I go to, then I always LS it again. It's really weird, I know, I have issues. Uh, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and do a Chamad 700 on my script to make it executable again, and we are good. So let's go ahead and cat and an admin, see what we get there. And here we go, it is a secret message. Let's go ahead and clean that and let's run my script again. And there you go, look at that. Please give, the, please give this video a like if you are awesome, and I know you're awesome, so I really appreciate it if you did that. Also, please consider subscribing to earn Giga Chad status. That's hyper important. So go ahead and do that as well. Awesome. Now, let's move on to how we can get a little bit of information out of this. Then I'm gonna show you how you could get in if you didn't know the password and how to identify these files. All right, assuming we do know the uh, passphrase and we wanted to know a little bit more about the file, we could do a steg hide and we could do info, and we could do IMG1 or two, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and hit enter, and it, it gives you a little bit of info without knowing the passphrase, but this is kind of useless. So then what we're gonna wanna do is type in the passphrase, which is going to be that, and then it gives you a little bit more information, and it tells you what's embedded inside it in case you forgot, yada, yada, yada. And that's all fine and dandy, but let's assume you don't know what the uh, passphrase is. What do you do then? Well. To do that, we're actually gonna have to use a different program. And the name of that program is going to be Steg Cracker. So I can do this and I can see, I don't have a Steg Cracker, so how do I get it? Well, we're gonna need to install it. And to install it, we're gonna do a pip3 here, without that, uh, and we're gonna do install, and we're gonna do Steg Cracker. And we're gonna get a warning about being root, just ignore that, and clean it up. You can read it if you want. It's literally a cosmetic error. I've used this many times and never had a problem. So I'm not really sure what the warning's about, but I just ignore it. Now, since Steg Cracker is actually going to use a word list to crack the passphrase, we need a word list. 
Now, if you're on Kali Linux, you are lucky because it comes with a lot of word lists already um, with the distribution. And if you're not, you will need to go out and find one. There's a ton of them, you just Google word list. Um, but for this demo and we're on Kali, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy from the USR share a word list. We're gonna copy over uh, Rocky, which is kind of my go-to for everything and everyone else's for the most part. We're gonna go ahead and copy that. And when you put a period after you put the CP, you put the file you know, location in the file name, then the period, that just throws it in the current directory. So in case you didn't know that, go ahead and hit enter. And then if we do an LS, we can see we got Rocky uh, and all this other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of my script and an and admin because we are going to brute force these two and uh, get them out of there because we know they're in there, right? Because we just extracted them a little bit ago. So let's see if we can do this using a uh, steg cracker. So how does this work? We type in steg cracker, steg cracker. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and put an IMG one. You would put in whatever one you want, whatever image you wanna do. And then you just simply put in the name of the um, word list. Hit enter and it does its thing. It's gonna go through and start and let's see how many uh, passwords it tries before it gets it. And there you go, 4,514. Let's go ahead and do this for the second one. And then we'll check the output files and see if they actually are what they're supposed to be. Go ahead and do its thing again. I bet it has the same exact count since it's the same password. But let's see, that would be interesting if it wasn't. Oh, and it's different, that's that's interesting. So whatever, uh, that's not important. So what we need to do now is verify that we have these two files, which we do. So technically this should be what was ever in IMG1 and this should be what was ever in uh, number two. So let's go ahead and do IMG1.jpg.out. And there you go. And so technically, if we were to do a 700 on this, IMG JPG out Y, um, IMG2, because I can't type, that's why. So now if we do an IMG2 and we go ahead and run it, there you go again. You get my shameless begging for um, subscription and liking, which does help out and it doesn't cost you anything. So please do that. Uh, so there we are, that's wonderful. Now, the last thing I wanna show you here. So we know how to brute force if we suspect that we have an image on there. And again, that could take a lot longer if it's a harder password or a passphrase, um, but that's what you can do. You can also use something very simple, which is known as the file command. Now, if I do this against IMG3, which looks like an image, but when we looked at it earlier, remember, it says it's an image. Whoops, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to do that. We looked at it. Da, da, da. And remember, it didn't show up. Something was weird about it. And when we clicked on it, can't load. So what the hell is this, right? We're, we're concerned. Because why does this, who would want to put something on here vague? You can do a file IMG, da, 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 da. And it'll actually show you that this is an executable. Why is there an executable? And well, oh, it's a Windows executable. Why is this on here? So, you know, just for this video, I threw down an executable and renamed it to make it simple. But this could be anything. This could be malware. You know, this could be a shell script. This could be whatever you wanted. So that is the power of steganography, not just a complicated word. Um, it can be used in anything. Again, bypassing controls, do whatever you want to do. Or you could just be, let's say you had a, a list of commands. You didn't want another admin to know or something, but you wanted to have easily accessible where you just wanted to, you know, type the... Um, command to extract and you knew the passphrase and boom, it's right there. Instead of having to go and hide it and do all that other stuff, you could hide it in plain sight, which is the best way to do things. So that is what I got on steganography. I tried to keep this video short and sweet and to the point. Hopefully it was, and hopefully you learned something and hopefully you'll look back when you are, you know, either on taking a cybersecurity exam and the question comes up, or, you know, you're out there 30 years from now doing a pen test. You'll look back fondly on a Nielsen networking and this video and you'll Remember that you gave me a like and you subscribe to the channel at this moment because that's what you're going to do right now, right? Take care. Have a good one.